again guys welcome it is the 10th of December 2012 almost to that ending of the year kind of thing that we hear about for 2012 but it's not gonna really happen stuff like that again L3 IRD the bird getting in some words getting some logic to you all into this a little bit of a wild wild west it is the gunslinging days of season three, and we hit our first, I guess, roadblock per se. But first, before we go into the episode, I want to give a big thanks to everybody at Defending the Esports. Go check them out at d-esports.com. Do some awesome work covering all the good stuff of StarCraft 2, League of Legends, and some CSGO EVE Online coverage. I think they did a lot of stuff for the NASL4. NASL, yes. That's correct, and it's a really, really awesome you know site. Just to check out all the new coverage of esports and stuff like that as well. But on top of that, I would like to also thank the sponsors we can see, which you can see below: XMG, Madcats, Triton, BenQ, and Antec. But guys, this is the first week of season three. The patch has been launched. We talked about it all day and all night about all the good items that came out of it. Leandre's Torment, Rudin's Hurricane, the Alakai boots, the Home Guard boots were really fun as well. All the little changes, but we're talking about an item that's kind of old and kind of good, but kind of old. I mean, it was a oldie but a goodie because it gave up a really good amount of, of attack speed, which is what v100108 the patch from like way before uh gave it pretty much its standard you got bf sorry you got dagger it used to be a long sword but now it's a dagger gave gave a 30 percent increase attack speed does the stacks for shredding which still does the shred stacks for shredding but it's really interesting to see what it is now and the damage was from 75 to 55 so that was the old black cleaver which more than times than not no one really bought it's a really good mid-game item at most, but you can really use it for late game because it kind of still fell off. Although it was still used for bruisers like a Trendemir. That's about it. Trendemir would actually use it and he would be the only one to really benefit from it because he really relies on attack speed and building those crit kind of things for his rage meter. But we move on to version 1.0.0.152 The rework, season 3 change, awesome stuff like that. Now Black Cleaver is coming out of the Brutalizer and Ruby Crystal, so those two items right there, you get armor penetration, you get health, and you get damage. Which is what you see for the item cost altogether, 3k, 250 health, 50 attack damage, 10% CDR, and 15 armor penetration. The biggest thing of it, of it all, really truthfully, is the passive. Not a unique passive anymore, just a regular passive. You shred 7.5 per 4 seconds, the effect stacks 4 times. So, a unique passive means that you can only have it once per whatever instance. For a regular passive to happen, that means it is kind of stackable as well, which is really interesting to see. And yeah, I mean, if you stack it, it doesn't really change too much of it. If you get two black cleavers, it just means you're gonna have 15% um, 15 of cleaver um, reduction. And all you have to do to get max stacks is attack twice. So get two cleavers, pretty much do almost 40% um, reduction, which is pretty good, I must say. You know, re reducing people's armor really good to uh, you know kill things faster but doing it at a really fast and high pace where you just have to do it twice not once but twice it's pretty good so yeah that is kind of the discussion today sadly black cleaver if you guys haven't seen the news of legends which is a really interesting article topic i mean they already listed the the changes but a lot of the pro players have talked about the legal cleavers because, well, it is the legal cleavers. That unique passive was one of the biggest things, but it's the other stats as well. You get health, you get CDR, and you get damage. Really importantly, there's no other item like that that really um, gives all their stats, period, right? Even though the minuscule stat of 250 health is just 250 health, 
in terms of season three, if you look at where health is kind of getting valued at, it's actually pretty decent to good on the actual recipe scale slash the value scale. So health is good, 250. Again, sight stone is 100 health. You gain ruby sight stone, you get 300 health for 1300. So if you want to judge it by that kind of value, even though awards do uh, account, accumulate to some of that value of that sight stone, there you go with that. But yeah, 100 health for 700 gold, pretty much in three to five wards per setting. I mean, that's Sightstone, but with Black Cleaver, you get that 250 health for 475. And on top of that, you get all the other good stats from Black Cleaver. Well, I, I, I guess I would rather have Black Cleaver and buy wards as well, if anything. Um, yeah, so this article right over here talks about why, you know, 80 casters, 80 bruises have been um, getting a little bit played out a bit more. Black Cleaver, again, a really great item. Um, used to be only but a goodie, now it's a OP because of all the stats it gives. So that's very unfortunate as well. So what did it start out as? We started out as a attack speed kind of reduction item that was okay, it wasn't the greatest, and now it is a force to be reckoned with because it gives health, it gives damage, and it gives flat armor penetration, which is pretty, pretty good. So, really quickly as well, I'm going to go into an actual game, see what Black Cleaver does in this instance. I'm going to actually skip it up just a little bit over here. Again, 80 bruisers are kind of a thing that's coming back to life because of this. And so, unfortunately for not, 80 bruisers are the things that we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at the one, the only, sorry about that guys, I'm going to have to put that overlay on. The one, the only Talon. Talon is a really great character in a way that every other character that can do really great assassination attempts with 80 damage or AP damage per se with uh, the other tournament which we can go into later um, does. So penetration that is what we're talking about. We're going to penetrate your mind right now. Just think. You have a 15 straight armor penetration with your awesome little black cleaver and then on top of that you have a second black cleaver most people are trying to do that sometimes. You can see that on 80 carries. You can see that as well on the bruises. Most of the times you see that on bruises. You have another 15 add-on to that. So that's 30 flat arm penetration just by itself. Plus you have the percentage shred that you get from stacking the black levers. Plus the passive just being not unique does that as well. So you get that percentage shred on top of that which will give you about 50%. I think for both, or about 40% for both. I was trying to say 40% because I forgot there's something with the passive that doesn't actually stack up together, but yeah. 50% with the armor penetration, plus on top of that you get 30 flat armor penetration as well. Most oftentimes not Black Cleaver, even though it's a 3k gold item, you can get Black Cleaver probably by, I would say about the 20 to the 26 minute mark. Again, Season 3 is not really tested and you can't really gain gauge values on when you get your armor items and stuff like that. But, at the 23, about 26 minute mark, if you can get one Black Cleaver, that's great. If you have two Black Cleavers by that mark, usually the only items that are really built defensively, unless you're playing against a supportive uh, defensive jungler, is like Ages of Legion and maybe a Chain Vest for top lane because Usually you're supposed to be top with the 80 bruiser and not 80 mid like um, Serpent Pikachu is. Those are the two things you'll have. Chain Vest, maybe Ninja Tabi as well, a little bit. That's a, a lot of better reduction. Doran's Shield, probably from the support, maybe from the top. So that's going to be a, a bit of reduction as well. But that's about 40 to 50 right there from armor, just alone. So you hit the half that first, 40 to 50 armor. Um, Just add on to the natural tankiness. So let's, let's say. Give it amount, just a general number, 80 to about 85, so 86, so we can do some math really easily. 86 armor, okay. So that's what normal, like, bruiser shouldn't be, what normal jungler is going to be. The two tanky people, truthfully. Do that alone, divide that by a half, because technically, you have double block cleavers stacked up, 50% of that um, armor is going to be shredded from just two attacks. So you divide that a half, 86. 43 and then you have the straight up flat armor penetration which is 30 because you have two uh, 15 armor penetrations that are not unique uh, hitting you that means you have about 10 armor 
maybe even less technically, hitting you right now for truck loads of damage. Because also as well, you get a lot of damage from um, Black Cleaver. I think it's 50, that, that's what it said, right? So 100 damage from Black Cleaver as well as your AD. You're doing true damage pretty much, only about like 5 damage or 10 damage of it is actually getting mitigated. Plus on top of that, you're actually getting attacked. Uh, you're getting shredded by not only him, the person attacking you, but if you're in a team fight as well, teammates are actually doing attack damage as well. So in general, Black Cleaver does more than just one thing for you to assess it on things. It actually does a lot of things to everybody else who's actually taking damage. And that's why um, for people who are actually viable for it, like characters like Jace, like Talon, like any other AD Bruiser, technically even Malphite if you wanted to even do the trolley build of getting Brutal Strikes and going through that little AD upgrade. Like all like Bruisers pretty much in general who can go AD just benefit from that as well because again you get the health stat, you get the damage stat, but you get that armor reduction which will help out so much in team fights. So that's actually really important, right? But the other thing that you also get as well is just the CDR. Again, it's Talon, um, not really much Zentao, Talon, Jace, some some other AD bruises. Let's see. Hmm. Lee Sin couldn't even do it. I mean, they have some pretty long cooldowns on top of themselves. So if you shorten down their cooldowns just a little bit, like right now, Rick is at an 8.6 second cooldown. If you can reduce that even more so, 15% plus another 15%, that would be uh, uh, really strong. Like, super strong. So, another thing of that sort, 30% CDR would be really strong. And I don't think, actually, hold on, let me check really quickly. I'm getting this wrong. I, I feel like I'm getting this wrong because I don't remember Black were doing that much for me. But, if Black Clay were stacked on CDR, yes it does. Well now, that's, that's very tough. So, 10% plus 10%, 20% on the CDR. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit over, um, about... 5.9 seconds, 5.8 seconds for every break for certain Jews can do. It means you just do so much more damage. Although he's getting ganked pretty easily, so I'm liking what Surfing Pichu is not doing because he's proving this Black Cleaver thing a little bit wrong. So we do see kind of the one or two ways to actually counteract a Black Cleaver. Really quickly, Black Cleaver is all about penetration and damaging and stuff like that. How do you penetrate or protect yourself from damage? You have shields. Malphite innately has a shield that is uh, procced off his health. So that's a really good thing that it really helps him out from everything. Um, Locket of Iron Solari that I was watching yesterday. Um, during my games I was playing. Yeah, it's actually a really good item. It's a really fast item as well because of how much the uh, the item pieces are a little bit cheaper now. Uh, not the health crystal, but the uh, just the regen pendant and such as well. So that's really good that you can buy that into it really easily and early. Um, another thing that you could do is just kill the person really fast or anything that does uh, cleansing or healings. The uh, Crucible was a really good item that everyone was talking about, I mean I talked about. I mean, it's a really expensive item, that's the only problem is that nah, that's why you don't see it too much. But if you do go right into it, it's a really good item to start out with. And we do see the Surfing Pikachu almost done with this first Black Cleaver. Almost at 1100, but is it a little too late? We'll see. Do you see him going down and taking out the first one, penetrating through that armor of Nidalee, and I don't think Lana can get out of this. Oh, he does barely get out of it between a little audacious charge and a little bit of luck, but yeah. Um, overall, yeah, I think AD middles uh, in general, because that's what we're seeing right now, unfortunately, uh, works out in a way, but again, if you're playing against a really passive mid like a Malphite, you're just going to be pushing up right into their lane, and once you push up right into them, well, it's kind of easy to gank for the jungler, even though it is a jungle synth. Jungle synth doesn't really do uh, too much as well. So we're talking about AD Talon, we're talking about Black Cleaver. Could, would, should you do the AD Cleaverness, or making Black Cleavers onto AD Carries? 
The guy that was most known for making a, a black sleeper on AD carries would be I'm a cutie by of Dignitas. And he still does it, but he does it with like Kale Bottom or Jace Bottom or something like that. All, all the goody, goody, good, like unconventional AD carries that are not really truthfully AD carries. And because black sleeper is OP. But he used to build it on um, Quirky. I think that's it. Yeah, Corky, maybe maybe Vayne. I don't know. I don't, I don't think it was Vayne, but definitely Corky. And um, kind of earned up that mid game into like a late game kind of status. But the only problem is, if they ever got to a super late game, Blackley would be a really useless item, and he would have to either sell it out or they would have to lose because of it. Because well, unfortunately, Blackley doesn't really do too much at the late game, other than try to arm penetrate. But you still need better damage items like. Most of the often times it's not you would see that being traded out for a uh, bl uh, bloodthirster because the bloodthirster was more efficient with healing and um, the amount of attack damage that you would have. While on the other hand, now with Black Cleaver, you have health, you got the attack damage, you got the arm penetration, you got arm penetration shred. It's a lot more useful for almost every facet of the game. You don't actually need to sell it. Um, mid game, early game, because it's still pretty useful late game. Just because it gives you that extra health bonus, but also the CDR, which is really actually one of the most unheralded things about Black Cleaver, which will never actually get affected because, well, Brutalizer maybe maybe gets a little bit downed by the, uh, the armor penetration, but the cooldown reduction is not that bad. Really, it's actually really good, so really interested to see what we can see coming out from this. First black cleaver you're going to be built for surfing Pikachu it does pick up Mobo boots, so I don't know if that's the, probably the smartest idea. Kind of probably needs Mercury treads or something like that, because Singe is doing some really good stuff against him. Everybody else is doing some really good stuff against him. Shred shred is going to get shredded down, going to get down uh, diplomacy, and we're going to see if Master Rap can be taken down. Wow, he does get taken out from shred shred before shred shred gets taken out by Lana Aqua. But overall, I mean, Talon did a really interesting kind of smart build right there, getting that mobile boot to try to be more mobile, but the only problem is Malphite's being just as mobile, per se. Get into some for cape first and just kind of working out from there. One thing, again, that most people kind of forget or neglect, um, health is a really important stat. If you can get that health uh, bonus up, and on top of that, get the armor bonus up, plus on top of that, deal damage i.e. Sunfire Cape, which we saw a lot of, um, not more over in, summer, in Summer's Rift, but in 3's because, again, magic damage, health, armor, really good. Anything that does true damage to you, i.e. people that shred you down to zero armor, you want to get that health up just so that you can tank up a little bit more damage. Even though you didn't take a good amount of shots, health really will help you up during that burst and re-sustain and re-go on to yourself. That's why you see um, what you hear people say, well, if you're playing against Darius, you have to build health. You don't build armor just as much. You might want to build Ninja Tabi so you can deny some of the damage coming out from that Darius. But if you build health, you can counteract that true damage uh, shot that you take from knocking Guillotine and probably survive out just a little bit longer. Although it's still just a lot of damage output coming out from Darius, at least you can survive a little bit longer that you can actually fight back right there. Ooh, I don't disagree with this decision right there. Master Red Jacket is going to be taken so far down in. I think he's totally dead. It's like, no way, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Another thing about Black Cleaver is, yeah, healthiness. That's what we're talking about again. You can be extra tanky as well. Tinch is innately extra tanky. Shred Shred with that Malphite is innately extra tanky. It's um, pretty impossible to stop what you're going to be doing pretty much as a team member of this team. So, in general, assassins should win out against tanky people. I mean, that's kind of what their their goal there is. They're supposed to assassinate, burst down, and kill everything. Only time assassins don't win if you pair it up with another tankiness, and you pair it up on top of that with like an aura tankiness, which is what um, Tark is with that shatter. And um, no matter what you do, you're just going to have all this tankiness happen and unfortunately nothing's going to happen for your team. And that's kind of what's happening to the red team. 
So this is actually one of those opportunities, one of those chances you get to see, uh, well, an assassination team which should be winning and don't uh, right, be losing right now because they kind of just went into the mode of, oh well, this is such an OP item. I'm just gonna play the OP character and um, we just went Talon, uh, Pantheon, and such. Those are the two that have benefited from this change of just super fine aggression. Use that black lever to hold you up even more and just go from there. You can see right now Talon's building a double black lever. Hopefully it'll get somewhere, but I don't totally know. And that was a really weird twist of events actually from Master Red Jack. But overall, that's pretty much the idea that I wanted to get into you guys. Yes, Black Cleaver is very OP. Yes, there are ways to really abuse it, but truthfully, Black Cleaver can be defeated. And this is just one of those instances how you can do it. Again, the League of Legends, uh, or News of Legends post that a lot of people have been posting up, it's a really good way of uh, showing how you can defeat Black Cleaver players. Luxury, Crucible, but health, get that damage mitigation as well with aura items or on top of that, um, just building some fire cape. I mean, dang, that's that's really good. But overall, being tanky will help you out, mitigate some of that damage while you still need to have somebody burst down the uh, little assassination type. Because yeah, Black Cleaver is an OP item in the sense that it gives you a lot of stats, but the stats aren't the greatest. Like, truthfully, having Black Cleaver over Bloodthirster, you get more out of Bloodthirster than what you would get from Black Cleaver on the sense of AD damage and in lifesteal, especially in lifesteal. And um, health, you would rather get like a War Mox or something like that. Moreover, even a Frozen Mallet, Phage, stuff like that, a lot better than what you would get from Black Cleaver's just limited stat of 250 health. It doesn't really do you too much more. Um, CDR reduction, but it is probably the best thing. 80 damage though, and health. There's so many more better things that you could get. But yeah, we are going to be done with the first episode of our oh, first episode, first part of the episode 31, the Little League of Cleavers. Unfortunately, certain PQs going to probably take one thing down before going down, but that's really just unfortunate. That is really just unfortunate. By the way, the League of Cleavers does not win this game, guys, so unfortunately, it is one of those days where <laughs> it's just unfortunate that you can't be a Cleaver winner. Anyways, guys, we're going to go into the next part of this. We're going to be looking at a ESL TV match I was just watching yesterday. That's a really cool matchup of the new slash old Azubu Blaze top laner Reaper. Now on a new team called... Um, something gaming. Eat, sleep, gaming. There you go. So we'll be right back. Don't you fret, don't you worry. It's going to be part two of the episode coming in soon.